Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. My name is Nahani, and I'm here with Genevieve from Heroni Museum, Nicole Jackson from Penetanguishing Centennial, and, of course, Jan from over at Penetanguishing Centennial Museum. And today, we had thrown out the challenge of something gardening-related because spring is out there. And since we threw out the challenge, we're going first. And what do we have, Genevieve? I have brought in some photographs from the museum's collection that show fruits of one's labor. And most of the um, photographs that we have are from the free press negatives. So these are two little girls named Beryl and Brenda Doyle enjoying the display of glads and dahlias. Uh, that was at the Midland Fall Fair in 1954. Also at the fall fair, you would bring your fruits and vegetables. Nice selection from your garden, probably the best things you've got, uh, and put those uh, up for, well, to win prizes. Just like this young girl here who is tenderly <laughs> cradling her prize-winning zucchini. And I believe this young girl's name is Nahani Bourne. And, oh, oh, really? Good for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. What was your prize? Was it 30 cents? It was like 37 cents or something, and I still have that check somewhere. Oh. <laughs> That's great. But outside of that, um, I found that it's really, really popular is annually they, this would happen. And actually, I can kind of understand uh, why these things appeared in the newspaper. Uh, but people would contact the editors of the free press with their freakish vegetables. And so we've got a 65 pound zucchini from Midland, grown by Mid wow. uh, Burn Johnson way back in 1959. This one is a little bit hard to see, but this little girl here found this in her neighbor's garden. It's just like a, what, four-pronged carrot? Yeah, there were a like lot a of those. Lots of photographs of carrots that got entwined, uh, enormous squash vines. And then this, it's hard to see. Uh, that's a potato. Oh. <laughs> Nine inches long and 14 centimeters inches in circumference. I don't know how much it weighed. Um, but anyway, yes, you see that every fall, once people start pulling their crops from the garden, uh, they'll give the, the free press a call and <laughs> show off their, their freaks. So anyway, it's very comforting to see every year. I'm glad people did it and I wish they would today. Maybe we could start that up at the museum. Yes. Send me photos of your big vegetables in the yep. fall. Yeah. Everyone's Best getting back into it, right? So yeah, <laughs> that's right. Garden, It'll give right? you something to uh, to uh, yes, look forward to or even hope for as you plant your gardens this spring. Uh -huh. Good. Hey. Okay, so on our side, um, when we thought about gardening, the first thing we thought about was bees. So. Uh, Jan, if you want to take it away with our artifact. Sure. Okay. So, what we have dug out for today is this beehive smoker. And this is about, this is circa 1900. And of course, um, we want to promote the, you know, safe bees, right? We want to do everything we can for them because they're in danger. But that one of these would be used when working on the hive. Smoke apparently calms the bees. So you would smoke the hive so that you could open it up and work on it. And this one, it's, well, it's gonna be hard for you to see. But down here in the bottom in the sort of pumping side, there is a hole here and it's darkened from where things were smoldering and the hole here lines up directly, sorry, with a hole here. So as you squeeze this, it would force the oh. air into here. And what you could use in the bottom here, like you wouldn't fill this container, but you would put, um, you could use burlap, something like pine, dried pine needles, something that would just smolder and create a lot of smoke. So there we have it. So remember not to clean your gardens too early. Um, if you go online, there 
there's several suggestions as to what type of flowers you can have in your garden to attract the bees. And yeah, we're all for the bee. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Awesome. Awesome. Actually, those are still like I, I watched some videos about because I, I just think bee retention is really important. And there's like companies that go out and move beehives so that they're, you know, if they're in an inconvenient place and they'll move oh, them. Oh, they, okay. The, the ones they use today still look like that. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. I think, you know, I was reading there's chemicals, of course, that you, they can use now. I mean, if we want to be really, I would stick to the pine needles or whatever, which are really natural and safe. But there are chemicals that they produce that you can use in them that are effective. Yeah. in producing smoke. Wow. Oh, okay. Very Rather than cool. yeah. So what's our challenge for next week, Penetanguishing Centennial Museum? So for <laughs> next week, we're thinking that it's going to be school break coming up. And so we thought maybe some school related items in our archives or artifacts or collections. So very cool. And it can't be my yearbook picture, Genevieve, because I know you <laughs> have that too. <laughs> Maybe mine, huh? Yeah, that's better. Okay, awesome. So those are some great artifacts and school related next week. Looking forward to that. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next week on the Show and Tell Show. Bye. Bye. Bye.